All right, it's going. Uh, all right, we're live. Wonderful. All right, all right. We're live. We're back Monday night for a little Get Some Fire Live. And tonight we are blessed with the presence of Mr. Mike Claudio, uh, member of the Goon Squad. Um, all around good dude. One of the first people that I met outside of Thomas in Apex. And uh, Mike's just a, a, a killer dude. Um, win rate consulting, uh, business coaching, uh, contracting, um, best selling author. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's always oh, uh, shoes. Um, he's got philanthropy. The, uh, philanthropy. He's, he does it all. He's like, he's the machine, you know. So, uh, welcome aboard, Mike. Uh, it's great to have you on. And uh, it's been a while since I saw you. I think, uh, yeah, probably last time in live, it was what, November or so? I'm not sure if I've actually sat down with you since that dinner we had at uh, Del Frisco's. Actually sat down, sat down. Yeah, that was uh, uh, what? That was the end of April, right? Something like that. So it's going up on a year. It's been yeah. a minute. So we're going to do a dinner then and uh, live. We'll set it up. Um, I mean, you know all the time, the extra time I'm going to have walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wish I wish I had somebody to talk to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That's not how that works, man. No, that's not how that works at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Be so since we're on the since, yeah we're on the subject let's let's go straight there tell us what's coming up for uh, February uh, February third and uh, so, so there's been like a lot yeah. of confusion around this Apex Live is an event that goes on a couple times a year which is an event that's open to the public in all layers of Apex right so there's three three layers of Apex entrepreneur or entourage entrepreneurs and executives and Apex Live was something that was started last year to give an opportunity for people at different levels to get together at the same time, um, invite guests, right, and, and bring in outside people so they can get a, a sense of the Apex culture and personality because there's so much to it, right? If you've never been a part of an Apex event, you might think it's a cult, but what it is is actually it's a culture, <laughs> yeah, culture right? Yeah. And it's, it's a culture of like-minded people who are no bullshit, who are not going to hear to, you know, blow smoke up your ass for no reason. There's no one here that's like, I mean, there's always some ego in the room, right? And there's always some bad apples that kind of get through the ranks um, in the sales qualifying process. But for the most part, it's a bunch of like-minded, equal-minded people who are interested in, like, you know, operating with a help-first mentality, like my core value state. And there's a lot of people that just want to, you know, give back and help and at, at every level. And it's it's this. So Apex Live is the day before Flying Friday. It's uh, February third, and it's a full day event. But this whole goon squad thing is kind of like taking on a little life of its own. Like this started as like a little bullshit, you know, Facebook messenger group. And now it's turned into its own little brand. And, uh, you know, but really it's just, it's just the, the six people that are in the goon squad. Um, we all kind of came up through the ranks similarly. Like, you know, I started in entrepreneurs in 2019. Brian started in entrepreneurs in 2019. Mark started in entrepreneurs at one point. Um, you know, we all kind of, even Thomas was like, you know, one of the OG execs me members who, you know, he started years ago and now he's the COO of B of break free Academy. So, and I think in any group, um, there tends to be a smaller breakouts, right? Smaller groups, smaller syndicates. Well, and, and there's nothing wrong with the other members of apex execs. The six of us, just <laughs> there's this, the six of us have just grown a similar personality, a similar sense of humor, a similar ability to bust each other's balls. But what ultimately happened is there's a lot of respect between the six of us because we are able to, you know, be real, be truthful, hold each other accountable. And like, that's what we love about it. You know, we're, we're not afraid to call each other on, on our shit, but we're also not afraid to be there when someone needs it. And, uh, you know, it's rare. I mean, it's rare to find a group of people like that. Just like you two guys, right? Like you guys are, trying to make a difference together and there'll probably be three, four, five, ten people that come along on that journey with yep. you. And you guys will just be yeah, the, we, the, the typical dinner group you go with every yeah. time. And like, if you're not finding a small syndicate in a group of 1500 people, you're not approaching it correctly, right? You're, you're either faking I it like or, you're, yeah. or, you're, or you're not putting the right amount of effort into building the right relationships. You're kind of trying to like treat everybody equally and you can't, there's not enough of you to go around. So I would, highly suggest finding a tight knit group of people who operate similar to the way you do and go all in. So that's kind of where the goon squad started. I don't remember where the nickname started. Um, we were probably talking about beating somebody up in apex and someone's <laughs> over the goon squad. We're the apex goon squad. And all of a sudden, Oh my God, there's a fucking LLC. You know, how these fucking operators operate like people operate. Yeah. Right. So uh -huh. a lot of fast action was taken and 
you know, we, and this is just a, a story of entrepreneurship. Like we try to throw in a goon squad live event at the end of the year and it, it didn't work. Um, and, and Ryan uh, Stuman, who's, you know, running Apex, you know, has mentioned several times he needs people within the program to step up, to get on stage and be leaders so he can start to, you know, progress into the next season of his life. And so we said, why don't we take the Apex Lives this year and each event, let's highlight members as the authority on stage. You know, I, think oh, I like that. I think yeah. they're doing like the real estate one later in the year with uh, with a few other people. I don't know the whole plan, but like that's kind of where the idea started from. Right. Like. If there's no better place for Apex to raise its tone onto its stages than within Apex, right? Oh, I like it. So I think That's you know true, we're, yeah. we're we're a group of people who have done the work. We've we've built our machines. We've became Apex executive coaches, you know. And and like you know, there's one part of me that says we've earned the right to that stage by the amount of time, effort, and sacrifice we've made to support the program. But ultimately, like we've lived the build your machine lifestyle for two plus years. And so we can speak it inside and out because we've all done it. Like we've all written books. We all have podcasts. We all have a bunch of content. We all have Facebook groups for the most part, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure, you know, but, you know, because someone's like, I don't think he has one. You're a liar. Go, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, don't have a, I, don't, I need a fact checker over here to like keep up. <laughs> but, you know, bottom line is, 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 you know, cause there's some turmoil right now a little bit, I think behind the scenes. And even I'm a little uncomfortable by like the way the goon squad has kind of built its own little brand within a brand. Cause you know, it, it kind of happened on its own. It wasn't intentional. Um, but like, these are, these are six men that will get on that stage February 3rd and pour everything we have into that audience. Um, you know, none of us are going to be selling our shit. None of us are going to be pitching anything. Some of us will be yelling louder than others. Just <laughs> being realistic, um, <laughs> you know. But like, it's it's six guys who have, who have gone through the apex ranks, who have built their machines, and you know, by build your machine, if you don't follow apex, it, it's the program at which Ryan teaches to build your personal brand, so you can create an audience that you can monetize. Like, there, that's just like at a business sense, that's what building your machine is. You're building the individual pieces of the program so it comes together and works to deliver value. There is not one secret sauce to business. You got to be doing a lot of things right on a regular basis over time. And if you do that, you'll win. If you don't, you won't. Like there's no middle ground here. And Stuman didn't create that 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 methodology, but he built a program around it called Build Your Machine. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, it works. I love how simple you just made it. Like, I mean, it absolutely works. You look behind me and see the personal brand. You look behind Ryan and see his personal brand. This is my personal brand. <laughs> In case you're unaware, I'm about winning and building champions. And if you've been following me for any period of time and you don't know what I stand for, you, you're not fucking paying attention. <laughs> right. But you, you made it sound so simple. Like, literally, in business, there's, there's a bunch of things you've got to do and you've got to do them consistently over time. And, and shit happens when you do that. Yeah, because I was doing a lot of build your machine before I got into Apex. That's how I found Apex. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I was doing it kind of, you know, amateur style, right? Like if you see some of my first YouTube videos, they are absolute garbage comparatively. Yeah, yeah I was actually talking to someone today. I've released uh, since July 2018, I've released 329 YouTube videos. Yeah. You know, like you're bound to get better at something you do it that many times. If you're not, then you just got a really bad videographer <laughs> <laughs> or no friends. Like no one's giving you feedback, yeah. you know, but yeah. you know, it, for me, it started in July, 2018. I didn't join apex till like October, 2019. You know, so my first YouTube video was July, 2018. It's not even, you can't even find it anymore. It's unlisted now. You know, <laughs> that shit is not out there. But it's really cool because my first video is about how nervous I am about putting out this journey about starting this consulting company and not knowing what's going to happen. Mm. That was my and first video. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. And I'm literally like holding my phone like this, and everybody knows like this is like the worst angle of like taking a video ever. It's like up at my face. It's <laughs> <a> <laughs> yeah. like my my fingers over the microphone. You can barely hear me, but I fucking put it out there, yeah. and that was the start. And you know, it's just been a consistent daily and weekly focus since. July 2018, and now I'm like, people look at me like I'm some sort of YouTube star. No, I just didn't give up on posting every week. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so weird to me now, because people see me at events and like, oh, you're that dude from YouTube. I'm like, no, I'm just the dumbass who sits in the closet all day and talks to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. We talked about it last week. There's only so many ways to do business. I mean, it's it's from, you know, 100 years ago, they were basically doing business the same. Now there's different tools with social media and stuff like that. But, you know, there's, there's only a certain yeah, amount so of here's, rules to do the business, you know. And here's the part so many people underestimate. Because I have conversations all the time with salespeople for the construction companies I coach about building their personal brand. I'm like, well, I don't want to build my brand for that company. They ain't paying me to do that. Well, then you are so short fucking sighted and miserable in your life. You don't deserve success. And I'm sorry to say that because here's what happens. Here's the reality of building your online presence. It, the world of business has switched from who do you know to who knows you, mm-hmm. right? Because if you look at it on our audience, 80 plus percent of our audience does not engage with you. Yeah. But if you build an audience of people who know, like, and trust you, however that is about whatever you want it to be, you can literally sell that audience anything you want. So what you want to sell it now, whether it's construction or solar or roofing or remodels or whatever, that's what you're selling now. It doesn't matter. Build your personal brand because you don't know what your next career is going to be. You don't know when you're going to decide, I'm going to go start my own business. You can't start building an audience the day you get your LLC and think you're going to be successful. No, you need an active audience to say, hey, I'm pivoting. This is exciting. I'm starting a business. You want to do business because you've been following me for two years, living like watching me live my life, and now you trust me. Now I can sell you stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's why like a champion shoes was so successful. My wife and I started champion shoes to championshoes.org. If you don't know about it, it's our nonprofit. We started that in November, 2020. We raised over $200,000 in 2021. So wow. Awesome. That's awesome. But you Just know, the, because, the no love like, and trust is there. About it. It's when we like, we haven't, haven't even put a full-time approach to it yet. We just hired an event coordinator and we're in the process of interviewing for a new executive director. We'll probably raise a million dollars this year. It has nothing to do with anything other than we took the effort to start the nonprofit and I had an audience that I could go just present it to and whoever wants to be involved, come come get a piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. They already know you. They already trust you. And so it doesn't matter what it is. Maybe you want to start a nonprofit with your wife. Maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe you want to start a new business. Maybe you want to go into a joint venture. Maybe you want to buy NFTs. Maybe you want to, you know, retire and go like run an Airbnbs. Guess what? Everything you need is on social media. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you're not actively building your personal brand, like where you at? I hate saying that. I don't know why I just said that. I think it's so corny. But that's where we're at. That was funny. <laughs> All right. At the, uh, at the last meetup, uh, Burton spoke. And uh, I mean, right, he works for a roofing company, yet he's this giant, you know, brand. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great example of that one. You know, it's not his business and he's killing it. You know, it's uh prime example right there um but like i all i need anybody watching to agree to is building your personal brand online is important because you don't know what you need it for yet mm-hmm. and if you're if you're trying to build it for what you're doing now you're missing the point it's, uh, i had no idea how far it would carry me not none whatsoever i and it's only just it feels like it's just beginning i've literally become the small business surgeon whether i like it or not so now i've got to lean into that and figure out how to build it you know yep um it's, uh, you know, I actually, when I started in real estate, it's almost five years ago. I was flipping houses and stuff, and I got my license four and a half years ago, almost five. And uh, But I was always the go-to person. In my town, they used to laugh and call me I was the mayor of town. You know, I volunteered. I'm in the police reserve. I volunteered. I'm in a nonprofit. I helped run the, the farm in town. I, I've always volunteered to help out with the church. And did that. And just because I like to do it. I like to be involved. I like to do that. And I've always had people in my life to, you know, go to. So... Next thing, when I started selling real estate, this personal brand that we talk about here on social media, I had in in the real world, and people just call me up to list their houses. Like, you know, literally Sunday, I listed, you know, yesterday, I listed two houses. Like, come list my house, come list my house. You know, like, not even competition, not even nothing. You know, because I just, they (laughs) don't, there it is. Yeah, come on, pal. That's the whole reason. (laughs) Get an egg. Big one. (laughs) Can I get Can I, buddy? Love you. (laughs) And that's what it's all about, right there. That's what it's. But he's all part about. of my brand. I mean, just being honest, like that dude walks in. He walked into his co- uh, client call earlier with no pants on. And I was just like, "What's up, MJ?" And just like, that's it. But you know what? That's we deal with people we know, love, and trust. Years ago, my dad said, "We, you know, we have the air conditioning business," and he's like, "You know what? Air condition is air condition. We make people cold. You make them warm. HVAC." He's like, "People deal with people they like. They like to deal with. You know, pricing's pricing. Yeah, you know, this one's a couple of dollars more, a couple of dollars less. You know, but at the end of the day." You know, who shows up, who gets the job done, whose guys are clean cut that I'm not scared of. You know, it's just like you deal with the people you want to deal with, not, you know, so you can do as much as you want in the world. 
and all this game, but if you're putting out this shady image out there and you're just not showing up, it's, uh, you know. All right, Tom, Thomas said, Thomas told me to tell you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is this about you or me? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. it's about all of us what? sharing the love. I love the people I get to spend time oh, with, yeah. man. Like we're all we're all too busy to even have real friends, but when we get together, man, we just have, we just we just don't. There's no mercy. You can't break balls. You're not having fun, dude. You can't. No, no fun. Um, but no, and, and I think like, look, it's I I and part of it is also is understanding, like you know, Sam, you just said this around like not really realizing how far it would carry you, like you have to take ownership of the fact that you are somebody and you are somebody that can bring something special and you are bringing a, a unique perspective and that like what you have to say is valuable to people and it may not be valuable to all people. And if someone's starting right now going like, well, my brand doesn't look like Mike Claudio's brand. Well, fuck you. I've been at it for three and a half years. <laughs> it's not supposed to look like mine, exactly. but people get in this, this mindset, like no one cares what I have to say. No one cares what I'm doing. You know, you know, they already know all that stuff. I know bullshit. There's a bunch of people on those shit. You know, if you're only per, like your perspective is inside of Apex, Apex is fifteen hundred people out of three hundred and thirty million. Mm -hmm. Right. Like and if that's your if that's your scoreboard, you're going to fail because you're just new at whatever you're like. You might not be new at business. You might not be young, but like you might be new to starting a podcast. If you're like, well, I'm not doing as well as the real business owners. Well, fuck you. No one is. <laughs> right? They're like 1% of 1%. You know, so I got but, a question. I got go a question. Ahead. So how long did it take you to feel like people were actually listening? Because as the guys starting out, the, the first thing that happens is they dump all their ideas. They record seven, eight, ten episodes of a podcast, and then just that's it. They quit. How so long be, did it take? Can I be honest yeah. with you? Um, yeah. All right, this is like a this is long standing. This is not just entrepreneurship. For as long as I can remember, I have never measured the results. I only measure the activity because I can control the activity, right? Whether it's prospecting or follow ups or door knocks or drop ins or proposals or whatever, I can't make anybody listen. I can't make anybody subscribe. I can't make anybody sign the contract. I can't make people list their house with me, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. But I can control my activity. When I start my YouTube channel, says, I'm going to release at least one video a week for the rest of my life. Like that was like that was the target. And the, so I didn't have to worry about how many subscribers I had or how many viewers I had. It was just I need to get my video out this week because I said I need to get a video out this week and I need to I need to live up to those right, expectations. Right. And then I added like the second podcast. Right. Mike's Mo like I added Mike Mike Monday motivation. Right. It feels like yesterday. I'm about to be on episode 52 of Mike's Monday Motivation because I just said I'm gonna release. I'm gonna start adding a second podcast to the interviews because I still want to rant a little bit and yell at people, and I can't do that on <laughs> interviews as well. So I'm gonna start yeah. doing Mike Mike Monday Motivation. Right? Well, I was just like, I'm gonna start doing one a week. Right? I just I think I, I think I released episode like 48 or 49 today. Wow, that's awesome. Like so, it, for me, it's never been about the results. It's like it's never been about the 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 listeners the subscribers the downloads whatever you want to call it because I, I mean it's been up and down like october november were good december was down am i fucking worried about it? like am I, am I like freaking out no but a lot of people do it's not about the it's not about that it's about so this is i'm gonna go back to a second yeah. perspective of your question mm -hmm. um for as long as i've been utilizing social media which starts all the way back when i left corporate america in the like early 2010s um I've always said, and I, I and I believe this wholeheartedly, if what I have to say can impact one person, it's irresponsible of me to not share it. Yes. If what I have to say will, could impact one person, it's irresponsible of me to not share it. So if that's the truth, again, make an impact with every conversation I have. Not make a million impacts with everything. One, I need to impact one person to make it worth putting it out. And, and that's it. That's all I've ever focused on. Put the content out. Make sure that it's it's absorbable, relatable, intentional, relevant, relative, and one person. I should be able to impact one person with every piece I put out. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, probably 12, 1,300 posts on Instagram since I started WinRate, 329 YouTube videos. I think I'm at like episode 185 on the podcast. Mm -hmm. One at a time, hopefully I impact one person and I just maintain the discipline of, putting out the win of the consistent content.
I like that. Rather than thinking about that result, rather than be just just hit the action every time, just hit it. I, I like that. A really I can't point. control who listens. I can't control who subscribes. I can only control what I committed to. And what I committed to was at least an episode a week. Consistency, I, and I, right? consistency. That's, all that's, I, that's all it is. Consistency. That's all it is. Doing it, doing it. That's all it is. And like, and obviously, like I've gotten better, right? Like Ryan, that my, my videographer has gotten better. Even this, like I got, I bought a new. You know, Sony camera to make these videos clearer and better. I got myself a mic. You know, I, I've improved it over time, right? You know, yeah. I've, I've adjusted my background a little bit to give it more depth because depth looks good on camera. You know, like, you know, and so from that perspective, like I've made tweaks along the way that have made it better, and I've become a better communicator and deliverer of information. And you, you know, you do eight to ten phone calls, you know, video calls a day for three years. You're bound to get better at talking. Yeah. I mean, that's just the bottom line, right? Like, I mean, I can show you my schedule right now. I mean, I, I do eight to 12 coaching calls a day, five days a week. That's a lot of uptime, yeah. That's a lot of fucking talking, yeah. right? And, yeah. and I love yeah. it, yeah. and yeah. I'm passionate yeah. about it, and my team is growing, and the results are there, and YouTube's starting to spike, and podcast is doing pretty well. And what does success look like? Success looks like getting at least an episode out every week. Hmm. You know, because I'm averaging probably yeah. – Seven to eight thousand downloads a month on the podcast. I don't know if that's good or not. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm still only doing <laughs> two episodes a week. Like I can't. Yeah, that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Just keep doing it. Just that makes a lot it. of sense. Yeah. <laughs> People overthink the shit out of this stuff, and they they look at the vanity metrics like gross revenue, but no one ever wants to talk about profit margin. Yeah, no doubt. Like how many? Okay, how many listeners did you get? How many did you actually impact? How many did you buy? How many followers did you pay for? Oh, dude, I've done that. I've done it. It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work, but that doesn't change the fact that people are like, oh my god, he's got twenty five thousand subscribers. Yeah, but he had thirteen likes on his last post. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like how many people are you impacting? I, I'm. I'll be pretty honest. I, I think I impact a fuck ton of people. Definitely. Oh yeah. All I want to do is impact one person every time I put something out. Beyond that, it's irrelevant. That's a fair trade. Yeah, I mean, I take the definition of success now and look at it. Did I get everything done that I needed to do today? If I did, then that was successful. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know where I'm going. I know it's going to carry me there. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely wild when you go to like one of these meetups and and people, you know, I saw your video and then whatever, you know, and I get the DMs and stuff. Oh, I needed that today, or you know, I've been struggling with that, you know. And it's like you realize you don't realize you're because again, I'm like in that mode too just put the message i'll put the message i'll push it. whatever it is it is i don't care uh, i mean i do care but you know i don't want to do it for nothing but you know i kind of just get the message out and then when people come back to me and say wow i needed that today like thank you for that and you know i've gotten in dms with people and had some heartfelt conversations about you know stuff in life and whatnot what they're struggling with and uh that's the impact that's just the people you know about there's 80 percent you don't I, I said, there's two people that follow me that are nurses, and they put their phone on the desk every morning, and they play the message to all the nurses. I mean, that's something you can't measure on, you know, likes and whatnot. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I've heard that. It's pretty wild that, you know, that people actually want to listen to my message in the morning, that they put it on their phone, and a whole bunch of people gather on their phone and listen to it. It's just pretty fun, you know. It's, uh, you know, and of course, I don't know. I guess uh, we all- I was going to be super mean and say you were a massive hit in the honest physiology department yeah, but i course, think that's yeah. just too low of course, yeah. <laughs> this is just a little bit of a low one <laughs> yeah my bad <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> fucked up <laughs> yeah, we, we i can it. resist you know you get these kind of you get these kind of brotherhoods go yeah, around yeah. and you get the chance you just you just gotta you just gotta give them a smack man oh i promise oh, you they're 99 percent of what goes on the goon squad should never see the light of day <laughs> A bunch of dicks in there. <laughs> when we talk about the questionable stuff we were talking about at the cigar lounge. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those late night There's, conversations that uh <laughs> that, that don't ever get aired in public. I mean, you know. You can't break those rules, Brian. All right, this podcast's getting off the rails. What else you got for us, bud? It's your podcast. What do you want to know? Oh, I was talking to Brian. <laughs> oh, me? All right, turn it back to me. Um, yeah. Let's see, let's see. So, uh, you said you got three books in the works. What uh, What are you trying to focus on in the books? What's uh, the messages you're trying to put out? Uh, so, Tiff and I are going to release a book about what we learned in our first 10 years of marriage. Awesome. Um, I'm going to release a sales book for contractors. I'm going to release a book on my core values. 
I like it, like it. And Too Strong's already out. What's all Too Strong about? So Hashtag Too Strong is about how to win fast and win often in a world full of obstacles. So like things I've learned through life that's led to some of the wins and successes I've had from time management to appearance to preparation to follow-up to, um, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff about goal setting and planning. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch in there about just lessons and stories from my life that, you know, some that went well, some that didn't and kind of the lessons I learned from them and how I turned them into wins. And, you know, people, I think over overestimate what winning looks like, you know, we kind of, did I win the day? I look at it, did I win the next decision? You know, there was a point in my life where I was 320 pounds, you know, and like, you don't get there overnight. You don't get back overnight. You know, mm-hmm. just, I have to win the next decision. So when fast went off and for me was a survival mechanism. You know, now it sounds cool and it's like on T-shirts and shit. But when I first came up with it and it was just, I just need to win fast. I need to get a, I need to get a quick win in the morning. And I need to win often throughout the day. Like that's where it started to get back from, you know, pure obesity and addiction issues to food and alcohol. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of things in there that I've utilized to create structure, create discipline, create mental toughness, create strategies that drive success and relationships and communication and sales and, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like just, it flew, it just flew, if it, it flowed to an extent, I didn't really think too much about it. I just, I physically typed mine, you know, I, I typed it out. I just started typing one day and I got nine chapters done in three weeks. Um, you know, and it just, it just kind of like, those were stories that I was just, you know, that kind of was on my heart and I think God placed them there and, you know, it made me interested in sharing those parts of the stories. I think they were, you know, important to, to my journey and who I am today. And, you know, I'm, I failed out of college, you know, like after freshman year, like I, I was an alcoholic, I was suicidal at one point, I was obese, I was, a, I had an addictive personality, you know, I, I was a womanizer, like it was, I was all the things no one wants to talk about. Um, you know, I don't have any of those typical, like, you know, scoreboard type things. I don't have a degree. I don't, I don't, I didn't have a, you know, entrepreneurial influence in my life. I didn't have money for a long time. Like, you know, I, I earned everything I have. And I don't say that in a cocky way. Just, I learned a lot of lessons and that book's a lot of the lessons I learned that, you know, drove me to, to the success and knowledge and, and, uh, and impact that I have today. I really think that's probably, you know, part of why you're so, uh, influential is that how real you are and, um, you're honestly probably one of the big reasons I joined Apex. I mean, it's sitting at that dinner that night. We met for the first time and definitely a little imposter syndrome in that room and some heavy hitters in that room. And, uh, you know, you basically told your story about how you were overweight, you were drinking too much and all this. And I'm like, I'm over, I was overweight. I was drinking too much, you know, the whole, you know, thing, both a contractor background. And I think the clincher for me was, uh, we talked to, I've mentioned this a couple of times, uh, you were ordering bottles of wine and they were big dollar bottles of wine. And uh, I looked at the menu and go, oh, shit, <laughs> he's ordering big dollar bottles of wine. And uh, at the end of the night, the uh, the waiter comes over and you signed the bill and picked up the bill for the whole room. And you said two years ago, basically, something like I couldn't afford to eat here on my own. And now I don't care. You know, it was a great dinner. And I was like, wow, this shit is real. Two years ago, he went from, you know, regular dude to the powerhouse that you are now and still going. And I'm like, this is real. This is like anybody can do this. Anyone from any background from, you know, we've all been overweight. We've all been, you know, drinking too much. We've all had relationship issues, you know, um, and, 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 and in this this room right here, um, you know, we've all had this. Let's say anybody can, anybody can try it. I wouldn't say anybody can do it to the extent that Mike's done it. Man. Oh, well, like, I mean, he's, he's, what, what, what he's, what he's done is simple, but not easy, <laughs> not by any stretch. You know what though, I said, he, you know, uh, me and personally, I need people like Mike in my life because it makes drives me. Like when I think that I'm doing a lot, and I look at Mike and I'm like, "Wow, you're a slacker. You better get to work." You know. Um, yeah, not not gonna lie. I I kind of I kind of look at you like that too. I'm like, "Shit, what do I got to do to keep up with Claudia this week?" Yeah. Or well, not lose yeah, ground. I look at is how the fuck do I got to keep up with myself this week? <laughs> it's not just you guys. <laughs> It's, uh, um, I mean, I, look, I appreciate you guys saying that, you know, but I, I think it's so easy to look at the current highlight reel. You know, like I dealt with anxiety mm-hmm. for the last two days and I'm not really sure where it came from or why, you know, I threw a killer event last year, one of the best events I've ever thrown. And I, I walk away from that going like, Oh my God, how do I level up for the next one? So these people still want to be my clients. You know, so I still deal with the same anxiety and frustrations. I'm not sitting there going like, Oh my God, I fucking made it, bitches. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not at all. And yeah. I think that's why you guys see that constant drive. Like, it, it's not a healthy obsession. It works for me. And I've, I've, I've learned to like harness it and control it. But like, 
I spent the last 36 hours pretty anxious, not really sure why, but a big part of that is like, how do I now level up? Because like the event that I threw last week, you know, 50 plus people there was, I've gotten a hundred DMs from that event so far. And like the people lives are changed forever from that one event. That's first of, of four for the year with that group. And, you know, like that's, now I got to level up again. How do I level up again? How do I keep making it better? How do I keep impressing people? How do I keep over deliver on expectations? So people want to continue to be my client. Cause you know, I right. sell hope for a living. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a tangible product. People pay me in hopes that I can solve their problems and make their life and business better. And like, I'm, I'm pretty fucking good at that, but like, there's still a lot of pressure and stress that I carry around delivery and over delivery. And I've hired like five people in the last 90 days and, you know, trying to make sure they're getting the right amount of leadership for me while I have this large client base I'm trying to manage and all the content and all like we went from four events last year. I'm throwing 10 events this year. Like there's a lot, right. You know, trying yeah. to, I'm, I'm going to five days a week on YouTube. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm considering going to three days a week on the podcast. Like I do a lot and not all of it's for healthy reasons. Some of it's just because I feel insecure. And I feel imposter syndrome and I feel like I'm not doing enough because I got to stay ahead of it because I got to. So there's two things I live by. Like, I'm going to set the standard. And I'm going to be the example. And you guys are proof that I'm doing a pretty good job of that. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But I got to I got to fucking stay ahead of you or I lose momentum. There's mm-hmm. a lot of pressure of being yeah. like that guy that people look to as the one like that. What does success look like and what is hard work to look like and what does discipline look like? I don't give myself permission to slide. Yeah. And that's not always healthy either, to be honest. Like, I mean, as like. Hard is hard, right? Being disciplined is hard. Yeah. Being undisciplined yeah, is hard. Choose your hard, yeah. You know, so for me, it's it's like, yeah, like, oh, man, I look up to you, Mike. Like, you wouldn't want to be up here all the time. I'm just like, <laughs> letting you know that. It's not – but, like, but also, like, I, I can't imagine not being the example. I can't imagine not setting the standard. And when, you, when you're doing that, you have to continually reinvent yourself. And, like, one of my core values is continually evolve. Hmm. And so we're always looking at ways that we can get better and do things better. Like, even just something simple like this. You know, I created this Q1 Champion Circle playbook. I mean, it's 27 pages of, of, of lessons that we went through in the event last week. Like, just something that simple. Like, putting it in, and we bound it this year, and we made it colorful, and, like, just the little shit. Like, I'm gonna be, I'm just going to be better than everybody. Mostly because, like, I'm not going to stop until I am. And that, 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 there's, that, like, people think there's an end game to this. No, I'm, like, I'm just getting started because, like, Every day is another challenge. Like I got to win the next decision, right? I'm that always, that's exactly how it feels, though. I'm always yeah. reinventing myself, and I'm always evolving. So when you're always trying to get better and you're always evolving, like you are always just getting started because you're always just getting started on the next iteration of mm-hmm. you, that next evolution of you. When like if you're not doing that, you're probably dealing with extreme anxiety and depression and frustration because you're not evolving and you know you're not evolving and you're stuck where you are. And if you don't make changes to that, if you don't start taking action on evolution, you will die in your own pity party and no one's going to care. Like no offense, but like people only want to help people who are attempting to help themselves. Yes. Yeah. Period. It, uh, no one wants to jump on a sinking ship. Yeah. No one jumps on a sinking ship. Chris Rock talks about that. He said, if, but, if, but if he, he was, but, even if you're driving down the road and there's someone out there trying to change their own tire, you're like eight times more likely to stop to help them than if they're leaning against their car, waiting on a tow truck. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. That, and so like, what are you doing to fix your flat tire? <laughs> because if you're not trying, I do, I will pour into anybody who actually wants it. Well, here's a good one. Wendy's got, do you ever worry about your new addiction is overworking? We, we, we trade addictions, right? That's what happens in, the, well, in our lives. Oh, I, Gym addiction, hmm. diet, like eating on a diet is just as addicting to me as overeating. Yeah. Okay. Overworking is just as much of an addiction as like underworking. Like I, I, I don't feel like I'm overworking. I, I enjoy it. It's like every time I'm doing something, I'm on my mission. It doesn't yeah, but feel it's, like it's work. still an addiction because when you're not doing it, you feel uncomfortable and like you're like your OCD. Yes, basically. yes, yes. So like yes. it's absolutely Maybe an addiction, but like fuck you. Everybody's got a vice, and mine is working people under the fucking ground. <laughs> it could be worse things in life. <laughs> it makes a really big impact, dude. Yeah, I enjoy cool. working though. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yes, it may be an addiction, but I don't, I don't feel like it's working. It's just the next thing I have to do today. Well, that's that's why we talk about list. our 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 alien actually, friends. This is, you know, this is great. You guys will appreciate this. Just everybody has an opinion, right? I I posted in my stories about like how being on time is important to me. Mm-hmm. And someone DM me said, bro, that's a disease. You are compulsively punctual. 
I briefly told him to go fuck himself and tell him being on time is a sign of respect. And if you don't appreciate that, you don't need to be following me. But like, bro, like really being on time is a fucking disease at this point. It's a disorder. Ooh, Are you that's fucking that's how screwed me? up this world is these days. <laughs> but like, and, and cool. You have your opinion. Get the fuck out of my way while yeah. I'm on time somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to work for a guy. I used to work for a guy. It was, it was in construction 20, 25 years ago. He told me, you, you know, you're going to go all the way. He said, you're not going to stay here as a painter. I said, so why is that? He says, because you do two things that 98% of the world won't do. He said, you show up on time and you do what you say you're going to do. And he said, if you do that, you will be 98% of the people in this world. 100%. And I've carried that with me for that long. It's just like, just showing up's not hard. Yeah. Just set your alarm, know where you got to be, and go do it. You, know? you think it was uh, really hard when you're a contractor or any kind of employer and just getting people to show up, getting them to show up, getting them to show up on time, getting them to show up not drunk, not on drugs, you know, not losing so their I'm license. Not trying to, you know? I'm not trying to solve that problem anymore because it, it makes it a lot easier to be an A player with that many C players out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A yeah. lot easier. Makes it a lot easier to stand out. Makes it a lot easier to win. Makes it a lot easier to, to, to build no like and trust. Makes it a lot easier to build wealth. When like you do basic human communication effectively. Well, yeah. the the thing that I've noticed here between here and, and, and England where I grew up is that in England everybody was trying to side hustle and everybody was busting it and everybody had something going on. Whereas out here, you're right, it's easy to be an A player in a field full of C players. They just the the hustle doesn't seem to be, be there. There's a lot more opportunity just laying around for, for people that want to do the work. I think that's uh that's something I see more in this country is the amount of significant opportunity for people that will show up on time. I think uh, that's kind of our attraction to Apex is that the people like us that are wired like this, we think this stuff is normal. And you get into the room of Apex room and everyone else thinks that's normal and we kind of find your creatures. But then when you're, like I said, you're hanging out with your buddies at the bar and, you know, they're, <laughs> they're just, you know, there to go to the bar every day. They're not there to do anything else in life. Um, and that tends to be your C-level people. Except, and then, you know, I'll, you guys probably have your own circle, obviously, at home that you've always run with that are, you know, have, you know, their day job, have their side job, have their side business, have this, they have that. And they're the ones with the nice houses, they're the ones with the nice cars and all that other stuff. And, uh, and that's who I've always run with, you know, like that already because they get that, hey, listen, you know, I'm working Saturday all day. I can't hang out with you, like, you know, but, you know, maybe I can do dinner at 8 o'clock after I finish what I'm doing. I'll jump in the shower quick and I'll meet you type thing, you know, um, where other friends are like, I took the whole day off and we're doing this and doing that. And, you know, um, I think as we talk about all the time that you feel like you're uh, with your fellow aliens when you show up in a room of Apex and everyone gets why you work so much, why your side hustles are, why you're doing what you're doing. And uh, they respect it and they, they help you rather than saying, you oh, know, that's stupid. Why are you doing that? You know? It's uh, when's enough enough? Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, yeah. When's enough? <laughs> oh, enough? you're so lucky. Yeah, lucky. Yeah, <laughs> it must be nice. It fucking is. It must be nice. Yes, winning yeah. is a lot of. It's really yeah. nice. It is nice, especially it when you've nice. earned it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, what well, you know. It really comes down. Like I said, literally just showing up, showing up for your job, showing up for your business, showing up for your relationships. Um, I do love that. Uh, you really push. Um. You know, or I wouldn't say push or promote uh, your relationship with uh, with your wife and with the kids and how important that is. Um, that's something myself I lost focus on. I was grinding so hard that literally was like, you know, just uh, coupled with the drinking too much. So it would be work a bunch of hours, you know, day jobs, side jobs, uh, going to meet clients, going to the bar after, going to dinners, going to networking nights. And so I'd be out every night of the week. I'd come home like a zombie, you know, kids would, you know, Daddy, I want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of like play with him for two minutes and jump back on your phone and send an email. And yeah, you know, I'm. I mean, it hurts me to talk about it, but look back in the moment, you don't realize you're doing it, and it's something I kind of tell everyone. Listen, wake the freak up. There's no reason to be grinding if you're not going to be there for your kids and your family. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the whole reason we do this, and we forget that perspective. You know? It's part of my brand now. Yeah. And to be honest, Tiffany's actually starting a women, uh, wives of entrepreneurs support program called Mrs. Wing Credible. I think that's going to be bigger so than awesome. my shit, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. Her first call is in a couple of weeks. Like, she already has like 27 people are fucking signed up for this thing. Like, it's crazy how fast it, but it's why, like, my family is part of my brand now. Mm -hmm. And so when my son walks in and I say good night, no one's like pissed off. Like, in, the, in like corporate America, like, what is this? I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, it's my fucking son. It's the whole reason <laughs> like, I do this. Yeah. yeah. It's the whole reason right. I'm here. Like, 
Yeah. No, and like, dude, I, 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 I started in corporate America, man. I get the whole like everything comes second to the company. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. And like watching Tiff kind of start to build her own brand within the brand, and like seeing the role she's playing and having her on stages at my events, and like having that be some of the biggest feedback we get is how good her part was. I'm like, what the fuck? I spent three and a half years. <laughs> you know, like their second stage, always loving everything yeah. she's saying. But like, you know, she can learn to 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 thrive and live with me. I think she can teach some people some stuff. Dude, I, I have time block now for my kids. Like specifically. I shut down at work at three o'clock in the afternoon and I then I'm with my kids. So right around six and then I block that six to nine o'clock period in the evenings when normally I would have just been going to the bar or sitting smoking a cigar. I block that for the three hours with the work that I skipped in the afternoon because mm-hmm. what happened was I'd bring the kids to work with me, but then I would keep on working and just let them play video games or watch TV or any of that kind of stuff. Now I literally stop work. I help them with their homework. We go to the park. We hang out. And then we all play video games together, maybe. But don't tell them all, because they're not allowed to play video games on school days. <laughs> right? It's about getting intentional, right? I mean, like this is what yeah, I've, this is what I, we've been I learning. Like down. you know, like I write it down. That's the appointment time, with the right? kids is just as a point, just as important with the appointment with the clients. You know, today I took the kids to swimming lessons. I was home today. Uh, you know, wasn't in the uh, HVAC office, and I got to take the kids to swimming lessons. They were so excited. That I was there with them, the swimming lessons. Of course, I got to spoil them rotten. We get snacks on the way home, and you know, that is great. He gives us chocolate cake, you know, a little Bill Cosby throwback. <laughs> and, uh, but now I find myself, um, I have it right in my calendar that we're going to be with the kids here. We're going to pick, I've been really trying to do, I got six kids, if uh, anyone doesn't know. So there's always a pickup, drop off madness going on. And my wife used to handle a lot of it. And, you know, I would do the work part of it. And I've realized that. They actually, I started jumping into this mix, and I've been doing the pickup drop-offs. And, uh, Daddy, I love when you pick me up. And then we get to spend that time alone in the car talking about whatever. And so then I, you know, take him for ice cream or whatever. Don't tell Mom. And, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever you can do. And it, uh, it's it's in my phone now. It's something I do now. It's an appointment I have every day, and it's a non-negotiable appointment. And people say, hey, listen, can you uh, meet up for whatever? Nope, I'm, I'm booked for this time. You know, gotta go pick up the kids. You, you can't. You, you can't really see it right now, but like as part of our year-end planning, I have every date night, every family vacation, every every afternoon with my kids for twelve months on my calendar for the whole for, for the whole year. Dude, that's like, you want you, you want to tell me that you 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 you're passionate or you appreciate or you're focused on something? Show me your calendar. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. tell you exactly what you're fucking focused on. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like I said, we forget, you know, we don't see the forest through the trees, as they say. We forget the whole reason we're doing this. And like I said, I'm totally guilty of this. And it was just like this. Honestly, you're, you're part of that that thing, watching you say in mandatory date nights. And, and, you know, we schedule time for the kids. And, you know, even down to just uh, the scheduling of uh, the say good morning to the wife and everyone that does that stuff, too. You know, literally is a reminder on your phone. Hey, idiot, stop what you're doing and, uh, you know, say hello, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get caught up. It's not that we don't think about it. We're caught up in, in trying to just, you know, put the fires out or whatever. Next thing you know, it's time to go home and you didn't send a hello text. That means a lot. You know, hey, I'm thinking of you. And you may be thinking of them at the time, but you're thinking of them and putting fires out at the same time. And, you know, all, all that uh, means something. I talk about when people get divorced, right? What do you do? First thing you do is you go to the gym, right? You get in shape, right? You go get your hair cut. You go buy new clothes. You start looking all fresh again because you're out there playing the field. And then when you meet someone, you're sending them good morning texts. You're bringing them flowers. You're taking them a nice place. You're putting this whole game on to meet someone. Yet, if you would have did that with your wife on a daily basis, you never would have been divorced. And um, it's just, it's like, why, why start over when you could just, you know, if you're going to get divorced and go through all that headache and then be the good guy, why not be the good guy now? You know, why not be the good dad? Why not be the good husband now? Why, uh, why wait until you get divorced and screwed up one already? And uh, you know, I'm having to mix of that one, but uh, we're trying to figure that one. Sometimes out. you got to go through a little fire to forge yourself into an anvil, Brian. Sometimes yeah. you got to make those mistakes, mate. Honestly, well, that's the wake up call that we get, right? These things that kick us in the head and you know, screw our lives up is why we got here, right? If we weren't fat, we weren't drunk, and we weren't saying enough's enough, and it's time to do this. Right, 75 hard happened because I was going through some shit and I was drinking a lot and I had my suicidal moments and it uh it was hard and you know what finally you just go enough's enough and and this is what we found luckily I think for all of us luckily we found this path to uh you know building rather than crashing you know because I think I think we've all had some crashes in our lives and that woke us up 
<laughs> you know, and some people yeah. wake up from the crash and, and say, all right, enough's enough. And then some people keep crashing and, you know, and we've seen, we have them all in our lives, I'm sure. Um, and it's uh, sometimes uh, we've, me and Sam have talked about it, a couple of people that we've seen in Apex that have done some of the stuff we've done, younger guys, and we kind of reach out and say, hey, guy, yeah, you need to chill out a little bit. Like, like you're getting a little crazy. Like, you know, it's like, don't make the mistakes we've made. And, um, you know, and of course they say, oh, I'm different than everybody else. You know, I can handle drinking. I, I can handle my drinking. Yeah, everyone can handle their drinking, you know. It's uh, until you can't, you know. It just creeps up on you. And you definitely, I love your, uh, the, um, uh, this was the podcast you did about um, taking the edge off. That was, mm -hmm. that was so spot on. So spot on. You, you know what? Explain that again. That was just like all about taking the edge off. It was really. Yeah. So like, you know, it's. You know, I just got just to gotta take the edge off, right? Everybody talks about after a stressful day or a stressful event or an important part of your life, like you just got to take the take the edge off. And I've always looked at it as like you're take you, you're taking the edge off, you're, you're dulling your blade, and no one wants to go into battle with a dull blade, right? And that's like it, it it's so true to like what waking up even after a couple of drinks makes you feel like, you know, or or that or that gateway drug that gets you into something else, but like. I don't want to go into battle with a dull blade and taking the edge off is exactly what happens when, when you do that, when you have those couple of drinks or you have to do the drugs or you watch porn or you cheat on your wife, whatever it is, it's dulling your ability to be on top of things the next day. And like, I don't ever want to go into battle ill-equipped with a dull blade. So I completely you know, agree. fuck, I don't want to, I don't want to cut a steak with a dull fucking blade. No, let's go into the battle of life with a dull blade. Like it just, Taking the edge off is not what it's cracked up to be. No, yeah, Dude, I so. forgot what it felt like to wake up without a hangover. Like, I literally forgot every single day. I'd wake up and, and chug water and take aspirin and go about my day, dude. And oh, be, you know, be, drink, be drinking again by the afternoon. You wake up in survival mode rather than thrive mode, you know? you um, Let me just get past this headache. Let me just get past this, uh, you know, dehydrated. Let me just, you know. And you're not even <laughs> thinking about what you're supposed to be doing. You're thinking about, let me just not trying to pass out and not, not trying to throw up and not try. let me just try and get to work and you know pretend that i'm actually okay you know uh, we've all had those those mornings and it you're definitely not productive and um i even see now like you know i was drinking a lot and then it's 75 hard and the clarity you get is just insane and then you go off it a little bit and then i did uh you know phase one and it was like okay yep here's the clarity again and then you went off it again and you phase two and you're like oh here's the clarity again I'm like why the hell do i even go off it like you know I definitely drink a lot less than I ever did, um, but it, it creeps up on you. You know, like I said, that, that dull in a blade, right? You have one, then you have two, that's one night a week, then it's two nights a week, then it's three nights a week, then it's, oh, you know, then it's Christmas, so we're going to we're gonna go to this party and that party, and then we're going to do this, and before you know it, it's seven nights a week again. And, uh, you know, instead of one or two drinks, it's ten drinks, you know. it's uh, I, I love uh, what you said the other day, Mike. It's no more than, what, three drinks at a sitting, and don't drink two days in a row, just as a way to put the brakes on i just think that's yeah i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying to raise my floor right because i'm doing pretty good but i still drop like everybody else right so i'm trying to raise my floor so that when i dip i don't dip as far yeah, yeah. so no more than three drinks in a sitting never drink two days in a row um i have a do not exceed weight as opposed to a target weight i'm trying to hit i have a weight that if i get close to it then i adjust my lifestyle immediately to make sure that i don't exceed that weight um you know one workout a day i still do a gallon of water i still read every day but you know, I'm trying to raise the floor at which I'm willing to dip to because I'm still going to dip. I'm still going to make mistakes. I'm still going to get off my game. I'm still going to lose discipline sometimes. I'm, I'm not inhuman, um, but I have I have, you know, checks and balances in place that I don't slip as far because at this point, um, like most business owners and, and people of, of influence happens like I fall off my game. A lot of people are wa are waiting for me to slip. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, I preach discipline and, and yeah, mental yeah, toughness yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and doing the work. Right? There are, I know for a fact there are people out there right now just waiting for me to slip up. Mm -hmm. And the fuck if they're going to like the fuck if they're going to see it. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I don't feel it the same way as you do. But since stepping up to execs and since the, the podcast starting to take off and, and me doing more and more consulting, there's more people watching. And I'm like, shit, I can't stop now. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep winning. i got to keep getting it right. So there, there is that pressure. I feel so guilty when I don't post a coffee picture on Facebook every morning. You know, it's, uh, I, I just don't dare stop anymore. People want to, they, they're part of, part of them want to see you succeed. And the other half of them just really kind of want to see you fail and see what's going to mess up next. So 
when I do my and they're, and, they're and, they're, and they're both helping me monetize my YouTube channel. So that's it. <laughs> we, appreciate you. we appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I do, yes, when I do my message, like people text me, "Hey, you right?" You know, no, I had to go into the city early this morning or whatever. You know, I had this going on. Yeah, I'm gonna do the message. Don't worry, it'll be there. I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. We've done it every day. But it's kind of fun to realize that people are actually like, "Hey, you okay? Everything all right? I didn't see your message this morning." Um, and sometimes they Facebook screws at them, and I'm like, "No, it's there. Go look for it." I know like, I can't find them. And oh yeah, no, it just showed up. You know, but uh, it's all part of the game. But you put yourself yes, in that spotlight. You know, and that's a, kind of why we all do 75 hard in public, right? Because that's the accountability partner of no one's going to see us fail in public. You know, it's like I'm gonna, if I commit to doing 75 hard and I'm posting it every day. You know, everyone's looking for you to fail on 75 hard. Yep, look, he 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 drank. Oh, look, yeah, he did this. You know. Um, you know, that's why we put it out there, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it happens, man. So it, that is hard. I, I have not completed it yet. I have not managed it. Um, you know, I got deep into it twice and injured out both times. And then I just, I haven't had that up there to go start it again. It just seems it's a whole bunch of work, man. It's that second workout. <laughs> you I, know? I did a 30-day um, while I was doing the bike ride. And the, the bike ride takes some time in the morning. You know, I do 10 miles. Uh, so, you know, probably about an hour's worth of riding and do the message or whatever. So the whole process, you know, you know, get the bike out, put the bike away, you know, get dressed, get undressed, you know, especially now with the cold. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then when I was doing a night workout, I was just basically wiped out because it was just a mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of time consumption of, you know, cause it was probably an hour and 45 in the morning and then and 45 at night. And, um, you guys sound like a couple of bitches. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Happy little bitches that yeah. don't work I mean, out. Too like, much. but you're not happy because you're talking about it. And you're looking. For, you guys are just literally just supporting each other's nuts right now. Saying, <laughs> "I understand." Fuck you. Finish the program. Mm-hmm. No, I did. I did it, but I came out of it like literally. Like I felt like I was losing productivity, and I was exhausted. So I was losing productivity. You're in- supposed to be exhausted. That's how you know you left it on the field. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You got the wrong guy on the call to start bitching about No, I, I agree. I, I, it, 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 it's, it's called hard. 75 hard for a reason. Fucking ain't right. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing it right, you're freaking exhausted. I mean, I've never slept so good in my life. Your head hits the pillow, you wake up, you didn't even turn over. Look, that's how I can look back and, and have extreme confidence and ownership of my success. Because, like, you weren't there at 1 a.m. when I went off my workout. You weren't there when, like, I didn't eat cake at my son's birthday. Like, I don't fucking care what you think about who I am or what I have. I know what I've done. I know the decisions I've made or the sacrifices I've made because I've completed 75 hard five times. Mm-hmm. I've completed live hard once. I'm in the middle of my second round to live hard. That's awesome. It's a, I mean, that's a commitment. And you guys look at me like, oh, my God, look at how much you do. Yeah, You don't see half the shit I do. Yeah. No, you're giving us something to shoot for. Like, yeah. it's... Okay. You just have to decide it is supposed to be hard, and that's what you're looking forward to. Mm. I didn't. I do miss it. Like you know, like I said, <laughs> it's funny. Like you know, you think I missed the suck. Yeah, I did miss the suck. I missed going to bed exhausted, knowing you left it all out there. You, you know? just miss knowing you did everything you yeah. were supposed to do, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had that one, one o'clock in the morning hiking around the neighborhood because I ran out of day and I'm an idiot and I didn't time manage and you know things. Dude, I've done workouts in airports. I've yeah. done workouts in 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 hotels. I've done. I, I mean, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I walk the city a lot. I'd walk, you know, 45 minutes in the city. I walk from downtown to uptown to get my workout in rather than taking the subway. I'm never too tired to go for a walk. Yeah. yeah Actually, I love the, the, uh, the meditative effect of that, too. Nothing like yep. 1 o'clock in the morning walking around the neighborhood, you in your head, just yep. getting, a, getting a walk on, you know, just thinking, you know, listening to a podcast. A lot of times just quiet, listening to my brain, you know. Uh, meditative, you know. It's uh, It really is. My bike ride in the morning is the same way. I was like, why don't you just ride in a... In a gym, I was like, because me riding outside with the fresh air, even if it's cold, seeing the sun come up, seeing the water, seeing the birds, seeing all the stuff, it's like, you know, it's it's a mental exercise as much as a physical exercise. You, know, you start your day with clarity, you're like, wow, okay, let's go take over the world today, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Good stuff. All right, well, man, we're about up on time, dude. Yeah, so I want to. Uh, um, what about two and a half? I need. Weeks? I need. I need to plug. Uh, I need to plug Mike's stuff again. Um, so, Mike, tell us a little bit where we can find you online for the guys that aren't following you. Um, I know that, I know you got the Big Stud podcast, but you got a whole bunch of other stuff too. So, uh, I mean, the, the easiest thing, if you just go to MikeClaudio.com, 
it's got links to all my stuff. Um, you know, I'm at Winry Consulting on Instagram, the Big Stud Podcast, Mike Claudio on YouTube, but championshoes.org is the nonprofit. Winrayconsulting.com is the is the coaching company. Um, you know, EC grading and demo.com is my construction company. Um, but myclaudio.com is the best place, kind of a centralized location to go to kind of get um, you know, all the all the platforms. Nice. Let's go do that. Nice. Man, I appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Yeah. It's always great value. Nice. I love love chatting with you. Brian, you got anything yeah. else to add, pal? Well, of course, uh, Goon Squad Live is uh, February Goon 3rd. Squad Live, February 3rd. Uh-huh. Tickets available. I think VI- Platinum tickets are sold out, I think. We've added, we've added, we've increased the quantity of those a couple of times. I think they're sold out now, but, you know, the VIPs are still available and general mission is still available. Um, we'd love to see you there. I mean, obviously it's going to be a great event and like, and it's not just because of us on the stage, like we talked about, it's just being in the room with, yep. you know, like those people that like everybody said, I just can't find people like this where I live. Yeah. You ain't alone. You know, we all kind of feel that way, which is why we fucking fly to Dallas so often. Yeah. yeah that's why we come to Texas. Yeah. yeah. I was there yeah. seven times in uh, eight months. So, so much for going every quarter, you know, it's just, you can, yeah. talk, about it, talk about addictions. <laughs> that's the addiction, right? Yeah. Now. We go back to Dallas, you know. It's the energy. It's always worth it, though. It's It's always worth it. You come out of there on fire. It's uh, it's really cool. And then there's a there's a spouse section of this. I think I heard right. Your wives are gonna get up and talk on stage on this, too. That's what I'm told. Yeah, so that's what I'm hearing. So uh, possibly bring your spouse. Um, that might be something you know. Uh, I think a lot of us go there and our spouses wonder what the hell's wrong with us and why we're flying to to, you know Dallas. Maybe you want to bring your spouse. And it's 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 truly impossible to like bring that energy and message home in a way that would help that person understand the impact of being in the room. Um, Correct, yeah. The first time I brought Tiff to an event, it changed her forever. Like she just, she couldn't understand. I wasn't very good at delivering the message in a way that she could grasp because everybody takes their own their own yeah. thing, their own energy away from different speakers for different reasons, different seasons, different emotions, whatever you're dealing with. So, mm-hmm. you know, highly suggest if you're an entrepreneur and your spouse is struggling, getting on board or understanding what you're doing, um, you know, I guarantee this event will, will help a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah so any of the uh this is going on an entourage right now if you're an entourage and you haven't been to a live event get there it's literally addictive it's addictive mm-hmm. the energy is insane so uh you know i know a lot of people join and they don't really know why they're doing it and whatnot get to an event you'll you'll plug in it's really life-changing so uh yeah with that said um we'll throw Great. a link in there i think there's a link in the comments for uh Glenn squad live if not i'll throw another one in there and appreciate uh, it. we hope to see all you guys yeah. down in texas in uh what, two and a half weeks so mike, appreciate it mike appreciate you yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. we'll see we'll see you there and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week soon i might come to carolina to do steaks that's what we should do right you're north carolina south carolina, south carolina you are north i'm right on the border. border you'll never get rid of him road trip dude i just call just i'll just call i'll just call the cops it's pretty simple the cops. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right good, all right, guys, have a good night guys all right take care. have a good night